G'day golfers and welcome to our channel. On today's video, we're gonna help you stop topping your fairway woods. Very common issue with club golfers. We're gonna focus on the top three causes for you topping your fairway woods and how to correct it. And hopefully, we'll get rid of that shot for good. Now stick around to the end, we've got a bonus little tip for you to help you with your grip that's also gonna help you to stop topping those woods. Right, you've hit a great drive, you're in the middle of the fairway, and you need to get hold of a good fairway wood, advance it down, get it close to the green or even on the green. Especially on those long par fours and par fives. And unfortunately, a lot of us just get too tight and anxious with these shots. So the number one cause of topping golf shots, and especially with the fairway woods, is to get cramped up here. The shoulders come up around your ears, the elbows bend up, and we get this chicken wing very close and narrow here, very restricted, and that's really going to transfer into a club that's too high on the golf ball and, and just hitting the top here. And a lot of it is due to with tension, hanging on too tightly, trying too hard, and there's too much anxiety there. We need to free things up. I've talked recently about building a free and easy swing, and part of it is really getting that extension out to here. Really feel like you're throwing the club forward towards the target and around and over that shoulder, that forwarded shoulder, instead of chicken winging here and getting very tight, very tense and very narrow here. If you're close here, there's a good chance you're going to be hunched up here at impact and too high with the golf club, missing, missing the grass and hitting the top of the ball and catching the bottom of the club and the ball's just gonna go along there. This is very tight here and you know, we've all done that shot where we've just haven't really released it, haven't, haven't swung freely enough, and we just catch the top of the golf ball. Now, cause number two is all about posture. It's very easy to change posture during the golf swing, and new golfers do it a lot, and club golfers do it a lot. Tour pros, they'll squat down and they might come down. You won't ever see a tour pro lift up or, in the downswing, early extend. That's because if you're changing posture that much, you are going to miss hit a lot of golf shots. Plain and simple. If we can keep that posture stable, so we're turning around our spine, we're gonna be much more consistent in brushing the grass. But if we're changing our level, your eyes are moving, so that's making it difficult for you to keep your eye on the golf ball. But that, that simple change here, so I see a lot of golfers, they get my hunched here in the, in the setup, or a little bit too low, and then stand up in the backswing. And they'll come back down again, sure, and they'll hit some good shots, but they're gonna to top a lot of shots because there's just too much vertical movement with the spine, and that's gonna change the whole plane of your swing and the position of where the club head is. And very often, you're just going to, to be too high on the grass, and you've gotta get rid of that. So get in front of a mirror, uh, use your shadow. There's no shadow today, it's a bit cloudy, but you get the shadow in front of you and watch your spine, watch your head, see how much movement there is and see if you can reduce it. You won't feel it. You will not feel any lift because you're internal, you can't see it. You need to be able to get some feedback, maybe video it or get someone to watch you. Use a shadow, shadow's really good at telling you whether you're lifting up or not. Now that's in the backswing, obviously that lift there, very bad move, it's really gonna get you in a lot of trouble but also early extending. So you might have a great backswing, really coiled and you've stayed in posture, and then you early extend. I've talked about early extension in the past, pop up in the corner here, we've got some drills to help you with that early extension. Basically what we wanna do is get your backside away from the golf ball and stay in posture. You, know, you can brush that grass, you've got to get that spine angle more stable and you're turning around your spine rather than this upward motion. Whether it's in the backswing or it's in the downswing, it's going to be criminal. It's really gonna make it more challenging for you to hit the grass consistently and, and get that shot that we're looking for and to, to stop topping your woods. All right, so I'm gonna just hit a, a shot here and let's see if we can stay in posture in the backswing and then turn through, get my backside out of the way so I've got that space and maintain that spinal angle, maintain that posture through the shot. 
Lost my balance there a little bit, but you can see there that, I'll slow it down for you, turning into the backswing, turning through the follow through. It takes practice for sure, but that's really something that we need you to work on. If you're topping your woods, you've got to check out your posture. Is it changing too much? That can be a really big cause of it. Right, cause number three, it's pretty simple. This is about intention. What are you trying to achieve with your fairway wood? A lot of people try to lift it up in the air. So what happens here is if we lift it, if we get that shaft angle going backwards, then that means that the leading edge is now being promoted, the bottom edge of your wood. And if that's le if the shaft's leaning backwards, then it's a very good chance we're gonna to start to hit too high up the golf ball. We wanna hit the club face not the bottom edge. So that means we need to get that shaft forward a little bit and see if we can get a little bit more club face on the golf ball. And this is about intention. And basically what happens is someone tops a couple of shots, the ball goes along the ground and they're thinking, oh, I'm hitting it low. This might happen subconsciously. I'm hitting it low, I need to hit it higher. I'll try to help it up in the air. Guess what, it's gonna get worse. So we, we don't want to lift it up in the air. Now, if you even when you flush one, if you don't get it very high, then you're not using enough loft. And this really is dependent on how much swing speed you have. So if I, if I have a, a swing speed here of, of say 70 or 80 mile an hour, I'm gonna hit a shot here nice and smoothly, but very slowly. Good posture, but really slowly. We can see that that has gone along, but it's gone very low. And if you're swinging at that speed, then 15 degrees three wood, it's not enough loft. You don't have much forgiveness. You've got to flush it to get some good distance. Unless you're into a howling wind, you're much better off with a five wood or even a seven wood, maybe a hybrid. You need that extra bit of loft. So think about it. Bryson DeChambeau is swinging at 140 miles an hour. He's using a five or six degree driver because he can. He has a high club head speed. I can't hit a five degree driver. You can't hit a five degree driver. And if you're swinging at 70, 80 mile an hour, then you can't hit a 15 degree three wood high up in the air. It's physically impossible. You just don't have enough club head speed. You're not generating enough spin to get the ball high. So use more loft. Leave the ego at home. Get your five wood out, get your seven wood out. We need to get club face on golf ball. That means getting the shaft slightly forward. Now, here's a really good way to visualize it. If you get a bit of spray, this is uh, dry shampoo, you can use some foot spray, you want a powder spray, something white. And you get that on the face there. Now, if you come through here and you're trying to lift the ball up in the air and the shaft is backwards, what part of the golf ball is going to be hit? It's gonna be the top of the ball and you can see there's a little mark there. I've got the bottom of the golf club. That's what's gonna happen if you try to lift it. What we need to do is get more club face on it. And that means getting the shaft forward, doesn't have to be much. Let's get some of that white section there, get that shaft forward a little bit, get some club face on. That comes out the middle. There we go. So the grass has been brushed there. You can see that the powder has gone from the bottom. That's me brushing the grass. And the strike is where we want it to be on the club face. That's because I've got the shaft slightly forward instead of being back here. I'm not trying to lift it up in the air. Remember, if you need to feel like you need it higher, then use more loft. But we need to get that shaft forward. The only two clubs we want to hit up on slightly are the driver and the putter. Everything else we need to compress a little bit, hit a little bit of grass, and that means getting that shaft forward, trusting the loft of the club to do the work for us. This is 15 degrees, it's fine for me, swing at about 100 mile an hour, but if you're down around 80 or 70, use more loft. I did promise you one last tip with the grip, and that is the position of your hands. If you're topping, then you might well be shortening the club, so your bottom hand might be a little bit too low. You might have a gap there in your hands, or you've got a 10 finger grip, and if you've got a 10 finger grip, baseball grip as it's often known, then that means your bottom hand is low. If we can get that bottom hand up, then we have more shaft length. So basically you're shortening the club here if you're down the grip. So we wanna get those hands closer together. 
that's going to help the hands work as a single unit and give you a little bit more shaft length to work with. So that means overlapping a finger or interlocking a finger. Now I know that's more comfortable for a lot of you, especially new golfers, that baseball grip, but I guarantee you that you're going to get more control and the hands are going to work as a single unit, especially if you're topping the ball, if you can get those hands closer together, overlap or interlock, get the hands working as a single unit, you've got a little bit of extra shaft length to work with and it'll help you to brush that grass easier. Thank <laughs> you.